So our next story, and Alan shouted out that he was a fan of this person. He has to join the club because I'm also a fan of our next speaker. And it comes from Manteca School District. Now, Manteca is located in California's greater uh, northern region, uh, rich in agriculture and industry. And Manteca School District not only is a leader, but it's one of the first schools in California, districts in California, to provide all K-12 students digital access in their classroom throughout their one-to-one -one initiative called Going Digital. Now, Tammy, Tammy Dunbar, who we're going to see from here from in a minute, is a fifth grade teacher and a Microsoft Innovative Educator expert who strives every day to inspire creativity and curiosity, our theme for today from all, for all of our students. Let's take a look at what goes on in her amazing Room 9. I've known teachers that have come in and said, I just teach them and they have to learn. That's, that's what teaching is. No, that's not what teaching is. I mean, that may be what it looked like back in the day. We are called to be there for those students and to be able to do that is not a nine to five. Room dead! Room dead! So curiosity is, and I love this quote, it's like the seed for creativity. I know we know a lot about Albert Einstein, we've got him up on the wall, but Albert Einstein said this, who can read this for me? Who can read this? Thank you, Andrew. I have, I have no special talent, I'm only passionately, passionately curious. I want them to love learning. I want them to be fearless. I want them to tackle things because life isn't smooth as we know. Life is bumpy. And I want them to look at those challenges and be able to say, no, I, I can work through this. I can do this. Ready? One, two, one. I was sitting exactly where you guys were. I was in Ms. Dunbar's fifth grade class, and I remember doing all of those fun stuff. It's taking that curiosity, that creativity, it's, it's taking all the skills that we're working on here in fifth grade and culminating in a better life for them, a better future, um, a better attitude toward adversity, and a willingness to work through it and not give up until they figured it out. Teachers would laugh at me, but it's love. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the doctor is in the house. Is you ready for science? Yeah? Yeah! 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 yeah. 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 It's when you make that connection with the student and you know you've meant something to them, whether it's they just got a math problem or they just realized what they were doing was a bad decision or teachers call it the aha moment and we feel we get that warm, fuzzy feeling. But it's, it's I love my students. And because of that, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. When I started teaching fifth grade about 17 years ago, I began giving out these blue tickets. For some reason, kids love earning tickets, don't they? But in order to earn one of these tickets, they had to do something pretty special. They had to find Mrs. Dunbar making a mistake. That's right, these represent my failures. <laughs> As a new teacher, I was terrified that I was going to make mistakes, knew that I was going to make them, but I also knew that I had 34 wonderful little editors in the classroom that could make me better. So today, I still give out blue tickets, and my students are still checking my spelling and my calculations, but I've come to realize that in order to cultivate curiosity and creativity, we must also celebrate our journey toward it. And so, after more rolls of blue tickets than I care to remember, I'm here to share with you some top tools that Room 9 finds really cultivate curiosity and creativity. Number one, Minecraft. <laughs> it's a terrific tool that allows us to give our students choice and voice in how they showcase their knowledge. 
We set class rules on the first day in room nine, but this year I allowed them not just to make tactile posters, but digital posters in any format they chose. You can see which one they chose, I think. Yes, you can. And then of course, Minecraft gives us a great platform in which to practice our class rules. Anytime you introduce a manipulative into a classroom, you have to give students time to play with it first. I issue tech challenges throughout the year, oftentimes centered around Minecraft. The second challenge each year is for each table group to create their dream school, which allows students to kind of push and pull the limits of collaboration and learn what's acceptable while letting their imaginations run wild. All groups must present their dream schools by connecting to our classroom screen beam and by using our wireless cue ball microphone so they act as tour guides around their creations. Some mornings when they walk into room nine, they're greeted with a Minecraft math talent, which is a simple way to mix creativity with reviewing basic math facts. The room nine kids also love using Minecraft to recreate their favorite scenes from literature. This year, we're reading Number the Stars by Lois Lowry. And as they say, a Minecraft picture is worth a thousand words. And we can see the two older girls who are flanking the always complaining little Christy. And I love how this student has put a grumpy gray cloud above Christy's head, so we know she's always complaining. And pink cupcakes, uh, which were not around during World War II, there weren't enough rations to make them, that made an impression on one student who created her Minecraft picture and then smashed it with an app on her phone to create this Minecraft masterpiece. With the latest update from Minecraft Education Edition, my students can use command blocks with non-player characters and chart their own adventure, which gave me an excellent opportunity for differentiation. One Room 9 student, a Minecraft whiz, confided in me that he was a little bored with my tech challenges. And I said, okay, why don't you create the next one? And so for two full weeks, he created a Minecraft obstacle course in which he coded over 100 blocks. Then he did test runs with small groups in the classroom and ended up opening it up to the entire class. And at the end, he had to explain to everybody how it worked because everyone wanted to make their own obstacle course now. We've used Minecraft for projects centered around the sustainable development goals too. In the Why Water project, we learned how to split a screen so we could look at a picture of a California water feature, in this case, Yosemite Falls, and then the student could easily recreate that in Minecraft. In our Human Differences project, some students created introductions to their movies using Minecraft. Minecraft basically levels the playing field for everyone, allowing students to explore and create at their own level. My second favorite tool for creating uh, cultivating curiosity and creations is OneNote. OneNote allows students to bring in information from an amazing array of resources, use digital inking, and design their assignments to look exactly the way they want them to. By providing a perfect platform, OneNote Class Notebook becomes their year-long and hopefully lifelong learning journal. OneNote allows me as the teacher to give students the information they need right there at their fingertips so they can focus their creativity and curiosity on responding to the assignment. In this case, finding their own unique way to talk about climate change in the first week of the Climate Action Project. Using collaboration space in OneNote is a great way to give those shy students an opportunity to let their creativity shine. And the screen clipping feature makes it simple to share their creations from virtually any resource. OneNote becomes our showcase for classroom creativity. And by the way, special shout out to one of my favorite bonus tools, Lifelike. The kids have a lot of fun with that one. When students are given choice, they work even harder to pursue their curiosity in a subject and creatively craft a presentation of what they've learned. And they learn the collaboration can help guide that curiosity. The amount of work that went into this lesson alone should speak to the power of OneNote to be able to bring it all together. And as an aside and as a bonus tool, why not? I've got to mention makecode.com. After our big hour of code assignment, we were ready to tackle our Adafruits, and our micro bits on makecode.com. After a quick lesson in how to use the website and program the devices, my students made magic wands 
that when you flicked them would do something different than when they weren't being flicked. And they were just amazing and they were so engaged. And then later we had the Recyclabot challenge in which students used oatmeal containers and all the tchotchke the teachers leave in the faculty room and there are Adafruits and Microbits. The engagement we get from students when we craft such experiences peak their creativity and curiosity. Just look at the intensity of my students. Many came away wanting to learn more about coding, and one young girl told me she wanted to go into computer programming. And we all know that's going to set them up for success in their careers of tomorrow. Number three, PowerPoint. You may have noticed that I really love PowerPoint. It was my first Microsoft love, even using it today. Uh, we use it for many biographies in our Liberating Genius program. Uh, Students learn how to save a slide as a JPEG, and then we print them out and put them on the wall and do a digital presentation. And basically, my lesson plans daily are in PowerPoint form. That way, my students don't have to waste time wondering what they're supposed to do. They can just focus on their best efforts and complete their assignment. And by the way, that Tootsie Roll Pop experiment that you're seeing behind me, oh my stars, best experiment ever. Ask me about it later. I love it. And I also like using the Iron Chef model for teaching creative, collaborative online PowerPoint, sometimes Sway, but you'll have to tune into the November MIE expert chat to hear more about that. The screen recording feature in PowerPoint allows students to recreate entire scenes of their favorite book. Check out these students who figured out how to have one person on recording following the actions of the rest of the group acting out the scene. Perfect. Curiosity, creativity, collaboration, all with PowerPoint and Minecraft. The Room 9 kids love sharing PowerPoint with their kinder tech buddies. Student learning is even deeper when they're able to teach something and the power of peer-to-peer -peer learning is amazing and unquestionable. Plus, now we've sparked an entire new class of kindergarten tech buddies and their curiosity. I can't wait to get those kinders in five years. Number four, Kahoot. When students hear that familiar music, they just get excited. Do I know enough to win? Am I gonna win? Do I know it? Kahoot is a great platform for formative and summative assessments that students actually want to take. And you can harness the power of Kahoot in Microsoft Teams now, which makes it even easier, which is awesome. You could even challenge your students to create their own Kahoots as a review for any course subject, and then choose a few to actually share with the whole class. That makes it pretty exciting. Ghost mode allows classes that meet at different times to play against each other by saving the analytics of the game. So period one can play period seven. But let's take it global. And today I am taking this opportunity to send a Kahoot ghost mode challenge to our mirror classroom, which is a new project I'm starting with Emma Noss in Sweden. That's right, Mrs. Noss. We are calling out all of your amazing students. The Room 9 kids hereby call you out to a Kahoot ghost mode challenge on the novel we're reading together, Number the Stars. We already have our times and answers in, so now it's your turn to log in and see if you can beat us. I'm curious, students. Do you think you can? Good luck. <laughs> and finally, fifth and last, Skype. There is no better tool for breaking down the classroom walls than Skype. I remember at the be beginning of this school year when we Skyped with Emma Noss and my students asked her, what time is it there? What? It's nine hours different from us? How is that even possible? And then we had a great discussion about time zones and the Earth's movement around the sun afterwards. Skype just piques curiosity in ways we don't expect. We Skyped with a former Room 9 student, as you saw in the movie, Kaylee Hunt, who's now a successful newscaster in Odessa, Texas. My students had so many questions about how she got from Room 9 to being in front of a camera. And through Skype, she was able to let them know that using the tools she learned in Room 9, along with the creativity and curiosity that was sparked in her, she was able to succeed and they could too. The Room 9 kids have expanded their knowledge by helping teachers around the world learn how to mystery Skype. Recently, we figured out how to help our friend Emma Noss at her back to school night. We modeled mystery Skype for her students' parents on back to school night, and they loved it. Ellen was talking about how to get parents involved. That's one way. Skyping can be scary for some teachers. Will the connection work? How am I gonna find somebody to Skype with? But what more could our students learn if we taught fearlessly, and looked at our missteps as opportunities to learn. 
my friend Kuhn Timmers and I, in Belgium and I decided to craft a global project encompassing several of the sustainable development goals called Human Differences. And we wanted to see if anyone in the world would join us. We were stunned. With the results last spring, more than 120,000 virtual miles Skyped in one week. And we continue to be amazed at how many more are continually joining in this lesson, which is now on the Microsoft Educator Network. Here's Kuhn to tell you more. Hi. During the past years, I launched four different student-centered global projects while focusing on several sustainable development goals like water, quality education and climate action. And I believe that formal education focuses too often on knowledge acquisition while there is very little interaction between students from different classrooms. And during the Human Differences Project, Tammy Dunbar and I managed to connect 50 schools over 37 countries. And the students, they needed to focus on gender equality, why countries decide to build walls, and how to build bridges instead of walls. And the students, they had to do the research and discussion, while their, their teachers only were allowed to guide the process. Collaboration was key. And the teachers were able to coordinate projects thanks to our shared one hour document. The students shared their findings by creating sways and videos, and during the last week, they traveled 120,000 virtual miles by having Skype calls. What's better than learning about global issues directly from students living in those countries? And we need to keep in mind that the sooner we start connecting students, the sooner the world becomes a beautiful place for learning and love. And the outcomes were overwhelming. Argentinian students, they use Minecraft to express their feelings and Nigerian students compose their own song and Egyptian students even attended class during summer vacation. The project covered several subjects like history, science, math and every class learned in very diverse ways. For being able to set up a global project, you need a very strong community and a powerful platform. And it is vital that you meet others like-minded like educators from around the world who want their classrooms to be globally connected. And in the Microsoft Educa Educator community site, we have brought all those teachers together on one spot. Without the participation of many MIEs from around the world, we wouldn't have been able to coordinate this great project, which was covered by media in 10 different countries. And by publishing the project as a Skype collaboration on the Microsoft Educator community, we were not only able to inform fellow educators and get them involved, but it, was also, it also offered them a forum to exchange new approaches, cool anecdotes and best practices. Consider creating your own Skype collaboration on the Microsoft Educator community to connect your students with classrooms around the world and make learning meaningful and fun for them. Also, I recently launched the Climate Action Project and there has been, again, a great interest from educators from around the world. And you can find the Climate Action Project on the Microsoft Educator community as a lesson plan. And why not start a similar project with your classroom? Finally, as part of the Climate Action Project, we are running a Skype collaboration project the Climate Action Minecraft Challenge, and we'd like to invite you all to join us. Register on the Microsoft Educator community today and join our Skype collaboration to connect your students with classrooms around the world. Thank you. Amazing. Um, I really think Skype is a tool that is so critical in helping our students understand the world as being a community and to understand the cultures and the lives of students everywhere. Um, so that and the fact that you and Kun together worked together to put that on the educator community, you had hundreds of classrooms, thousands of miles traveled. And like I remember when it was happening, the tweets and the social media and the images of the kids were absolutely amazing. Um, so, But I want to kind of flip back to what you first started talking about, which was Minecraft. And Minecraft 
is very underutilized still, and I think people are still very scared about it. So my question for you, Tammy, is were you an expert in Minecraft the first time you used it with your kids? <laughs> no, I, I, matter of fact, I'm still a noob, actually. <laughs> and, but it, it's kind of what Alan was talking about. It's giving up control and allowing the students to be the teachers. So this year, our third tech challenge was you're creating a video in Minecraft to teach your noob teacher some new cool thing in Minecraft. Oh, I love that. Right? That's very meta. <laughs> Use Minecraft to teach Minecraft. Uh, yeah, why That's not? so cool. Awesome. Yeah, so you went into it not really knowing how to play it. You let the kids kind of take over. They had autonomy. So I hear like the themes coming from what Alan talked about, choice. Um, choice and movies. did you find that they went way off track or did they stay focused on their learning target? Well, we're, we're still professionals. Are we teachers? And so we, we craft the, the assignments, even though I don't, and I'm not great with the with Minecraft, I can still craft a lesson that I know can lead them to where they need to go. So hopefully, well, some of the videos are pretty cool. That's amazing. I, I can move left and right pretty well, and now I know how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Woo. All right, so it's time, audience, for you to give us some questions, and I know there's tons coming online, so let, oh, I see Richard <laughs> is jumping up. I knew you would. Hi, Tammy. Hi, hey, Tammy. Richard. Uh, I wanted to ask a minute more about Minecraft, especially about parents, because they probably see Minecraft at home as that's the toy that my student is wasting, or you spending lots of time on, not wasting. How do you then help parents understand now that it has an educational purpose and that kids are really learning and demonstrating their knowledge with that? Oh, really good question. And of course, that's uh, the whole thing with parents is having those lines of communication open. So in my classroom, I've got a website. Back to school night, they get a little refrigerator magnet that has my number, they can follow my Twitter feed and all of that. But then also on back to school night, we make a movie, because who wants to hear me being a Charlie Brown grown up, uh, you know, all night long. So we make a movie and the kids incorporate Minecraft and we show them what it looks like. And so when they see the actual projects that come out of it, and I invite them to check the website every, every week because I put up homework, Hopefully they check it. Um, but when they go onto the website, they'll see those, those things being used, Minecraft and, and all the fun things that we use in class, the gamification of class. But they can see that there's some practical use to it. Fabulous. Thanks. All right, Eve, I'm sure we have lots of questions coming in from online. Yes, there is a, I mean, our chat room is on fire, Tammy. <laughs> First of all, uh -oh. we don't have enough pe people backstage to support all the questions that are coming out. Okay. Everybody loves Tammy, Aww. so just a random question. And actually, there can I can I sneak in two questions? In one? Yes. Um, so first question is, uh, how do you uh, drive support for your teaching style for from the rest of the school? from your leadership and how does this kind of, because it's not really, um, you know, it's it's very um, uh, revolutionary to some, to some extent. And the other one is uh, if you can remember your last blue ticket. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, so first of all, how do I get my teaching staff? Yeah. Uh, we're very lucky. As Anthony mentioned earlier, we were one of the first districts in California to go you know, Microsoft one-to-one, -one, and I'm, I, we have an amazing superintendent yes. who got me on the team early, so I was able to do a lot of training, and I was uh, one of the first group of MIE experts out of our district. He also did trainings. When you have a superintendent who knows the power of technology and actually does trainings for teachers, then it's not yeah. so hard for me to get you know, teachers on board and people to support what I do in my classroom. And of course, my classroom's open. Uh, I invite teachers to come in and, and watch anytime they want to, to get ideas. That's how we learn best from each other. And I try to go visit other teachers because there's still so much I can learn and I'm excited to learn. And oh, gracious, my last blue ticket. <sighs> Uh, my last blue ticket was I forgot to change the date. I keep an agenda up on the board, and I had forgotten to change. I always write it in red, and I had written down it was it was we, we just we changed to October, and, and still I September. still September. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I have to tell you a story too. So I met Tammy before I even worked at Microsoft, and I was actually down in Manteca right when they first rolled out one to one, and I was down there training, and Tammy was sitting in the very front row. And um, what blew me away was the fact that her superintendent was sitting in the training 
with the teachers, and he was there the entire day, learning alongside with them. He brought me the device they were doing. He explained it. So at Manteca, the one thing that I know to be true is that the principals and the leadership team all sit with the teachers, and they learn with the teachers, and it's very collaborative, and I was so impressed. He's a very energetic guy, too, by the way. He is, and it's um, empowering. Yeah, it's and, very empowering and to see that. Tammy asked me how to become a MMA expert, and I showed her uh, where she could register, and boom, here we are all these years later. Um, so I see Ryan. Hi, Ryan, has a question. Yeah, I have a question about Minecraft. So a lot of the examples that you showed, Tammy, were uh, looked like they were either demonstrating knowledge that they had already learned, or it was the stuff that they were learning was more the kind of the coding and the technology side. Do you also use it at all for them to learn content separate from the technology, or is it better served as a demonstration of what they've already learned? Oh, so to learn, well, it's certainly nice to learn a uh, volume and, and, you know, area and that sort of thing with Minecraft. That's, I could do math lessons just within Minecraft, right? Um, but for language arts, yeah, maybe it's better for, for showing off. Especially, I love doing s favorite settings and scenes from, from classics. So, yeah, I, I, I like the question. I'm, that's a good question because I hadn't really considered it that way. But I think I only teach math that way with Minecraft. And you can't overuse it, right? Because right. then it loses its, its allure and its charm. Not that I love What's it, fabulous but. about Minecraft, by the way, if you go to education.minecraft.net, um, there are tons of worlds and lesson plans and yeah. ideas. There's actually one I downloaded the other day called Lesson Hub, which you go in and you can go into the math world and you can learn about ratios and percents, or you can go into the literacy world. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a great way, actually, it's one of my favorite worlds for teachers that haven't used Minecraft to download and kind of see how it could be used for those kinds of ideas. Yeah, there is one on there that's an, an eyeball that they can dive into and so you can download that and teach a little yeah. science. Yeah, so fabulous. Great Thank question. You Thank Thanks, you. Ryan. Eve, anything else from online? We have time for one more question. Yes, one very simple question. Uh, in the video, you showed this blue ball. So can you explain what this is and how do you use it in the classroom? Okay, so if you watch Shark Tank, it was actually on Shark Tank. It was I got it on a Kickstarter. My cousin is a, an inventor and it's a friend of his. It's called the cue ball. Oh, he's going to love me for this. <laughs> um, he just got some funding on, on Shark Tank, so that's good. It's cue ball and it plugs into, we've got a, a sound system in the classroom, and it plugs into, uh, it's got a, a female uh, one eighth of an inch uh, outlet and you plug into that and it's wireless. So it's like a big soft Nerf ball and the wireless mic is inside and it, it's bomb, it's bulletproof. I mean, you saw, we toss it around, it falls, it's great, but it engages the student. I know it's a dumb little thing, but the ones who don't wanna talk, wanna talk. I mean, the one so you use it to play, talk, like, so they're standing in a circle and you want a student to talk no, no, and you no, throw no, no. it. So I'm, I'm up in front, like you saw okay. me in there in the movie, and I'm just, you know, doing a lesson and moving around the classroom. And it's like, okay, so who, oh, you have a question there, boom. Right. You know, so, and it gets them more involved. It's a little more fun. I mean, engages them more. And then they get to hear themselves on a microphone, yeah. right? Kids love, love that. Fabulous. Well, you guys, thanks so much to Tammy for sharing all the amazing things you do in Room 9. Thanks to the kids. Thank um, you. I'm always inspired. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Tammy, thank you so much. I was backstage while you were presenting, and probably the best compliment that I could imagine is one of our staff, Rachel, as you were talking, she was like, how do I get my kids into Tammy's class? Aww. So uh, thank you very much for joining today. And I, uh, Tammy and Kuhn, I mean, those are educator rock stars. And I, I'm excited about the work that they're doing together. And they're using Skype uh, to connect their students from around the world and to the world. 